This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to the February 16th South Whitehall Township Planning Commission meeting. Everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Adams, would you like to do the roll call? Surely. Trevor Dombach. Here. Tim Dugan. Here. Andrew Flagg. Not online? Okay. Brian Height. Here. Diane Kelly. Here. Mark Luth. Here. David Wilson. Here. Six members present, sufficient for a quorum. I'd also like to mention township staff and consultants here. We have Greg Adams, township planner, Chris Stroller, long range planner, Tom Petrucci, township manager, Dave Manhart, director of community development, Laura Harrier, zoning officer, Tony Tellerita from Pidcock Company, Township Engineer, Jennifer Aldifer, Township Solicitor with Sader Law, and Leo DeVito, Alternate Township Solicitor with Brockle and DeVito. All right. Um, Greg, would you like to go over meeting rules? Yes. For an orderly meeting wherein all attendees may fully participate, we ask that you adhere to the following rules. Please mute your microphone or telephone to avoid background noise that may cause interference in the meeting and make it difficult for others to hear. Staff may mute microphones of remote attendees if needed. Public questions and comments will be taken at periodic intervals throughout the agenda. We will start with no time limits, but the Planning Commission Chairman may impose a short time limitation if there are many questions or if the meeting is running short on time. For in-person attendees, please raise your hand to be recognized and then move to the podium when directed and state your name, address, and comment or question. Please turn the podium microphone on before speaking and off when done. For remote attendees, the chat box feature will be active throughout the meeting. If you have a comment or question, please type your full name and address in the chat box. When you are recognized and so directed, please unmute your microphone and state your comment or question. Mute your microphone when done. For those accessing the meeting by telephone only, staff will periodically ask for caller comments and unmute all callers. Callers must identify their name and address prior to making a comment. Your cooperation and adherence to these rules will ensure an orderly and respectful meeting. Thank you. There seems to be a uh, technical difficulty with uh, the online video conference. Is, is that something we need a few minutes for? for the we don't know who's online. Yeah, the online audience. Okay, so you can see it. Okay. All right. So it's just the display, but. So if if anyone online has questions, you can. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, we're on agenda item number three. Review and approval of the January 19 meeting minutes. Anyone have any uh, corrections or comments? The meeting minutes. 
I have one notation. Um, I did attend the meeting virtually. I don't know if you would like to notate that in the meeting minutes. Any other? I'll make a motion to approve with that addition. Second. Greg, would you like to do the roll call? Mm -hmm. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. I will abstain. I was not here. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes five to zero, one abstention. Agenda item number four, comp plan review. Thank you. Um, you have a memo in your packet. Um, on December 15th of 2022, the Planning Commission released the draft comprehensive plan for public comment. According to the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, Act 247, Section 302, the public comment period is required for a 45-day period to allow for public comments to be received from the county, adjacent municipalities, and the local school district. Um, we had left the public comment period open until this past this past Monday, and we closed public comment on Monday for both the um, municipalities review, but also for general public comments, which we solicited both in person and um, online. We received two comments, two official comments, one from the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission, and there is a copy of that letter in your packet, and one from Upper McCungee Township. Uh, to summarize, the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission confirmed that the South Whitehall Township Comprehensive Plan meets the requirements of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code and promotes several goals and policies outlined in future LV, the regional plan. The Planning Commission commended South Whitehall Township for the use of innovative tools and practices to address the modern day needs of the region and made comments and recommendations on specific topics in each chapter. The details can be found in the letter of those recommendations. Upper McCungee Township confirmed that the designated land uses in the vicinity of the common municipal border are consistent with those in Upper McCungee. Based on those um, official comments, we have made changes and we have made um, adjustments to the draft comprehensive plan. Um, the comments from the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission were very helpful. Um, and outlining specific additions to the plan, which we've included. I've also included um, all of the public comments that were submitted online and in the paper submissions. We received a total of 30 of those. Um, to summarize, uh, staff reviewed these comments and essentially tried to group them into similar types of comments with the first category being plan edits. These were comments um, with residents uh, suggesting edits to maybe some of the graphics, maps, or pointing out typos or captions. We have addressed these in the final plan. The second category, we received six comments specifically on transportation. Many of these comments, um, we had received um, some uh, comments from prior during our transportation uh, chapter in the comprehensive plan workshops last year. Um, a lot of these comments were very specific to transportation areas that we have made note of and we will revisit during the future transportation plan. And we plan to follow up with um, several of those residents during that time to um, weigh in on the transportation plan when that um, implementation item is undertaken. There were five comments specific to historic preservation. Uh, many of these um, offered suggestions for new historic preservation sites. Uh, one was the removal of a historic site that was listed in the plan that is no longer there. Um, I will say the historic preservation or the specific historic sites that were noted in the comprehensive plan were based off of the 2010 official map. Uh, that was an extensive process to identify those historic resources. So the removal of the one site that is no longer there has been taken out but the addition of future sites will be addressed in either a new official map process or in more specific historic preservation planning. There were four comments submitted that staff, under review of these comments, it was brought to our attention that there might be some more 
clarification needed based on the um, comments proposed. A lot of these um, dealt with the misunderstanding of zoning changes during the land use chapter um, and the assumption that in some of the proposed future land uses that these were specific zoning changes and we had questions about rezoning of properties. In order to address these comments, staff has made um, additions to the plan to try to make the um, land use and zoning process a little bit more clear. And in the executive summary, which staff is working on now, we are trying to address how this process is not only um, addressed in the comprehensive plan, but in the implementation of that plan. Um, we had two comments specific to land use. Um, some of this regarding land preservation as a uh, strategy, and that is noted in the um, implementation end of the uh, plan where we are looking at uh, specific land preservation, open space preservation um, planning and strategies. And there was another comment on more examples of conservation subdivisions, which is a newer concept which we discussed at length during the land use chapter. And what we are hoping to do is once um, the uh, township starts to look at any updates to the zoning ordinance and we start to explore the conservation subdivision idea, we will look at bringing in more examples of that concept for both the board and planning commission and residents. There was one comment on um, the uh, process and frequency of the re-examination report that is addressed in implementation item R2, which is the re-examination report um, that it will be at the um, determination of the Board of Commissioners and Township Administration what the frequency of that re-examination will be. And there were five comments that were really just miscellaneous. Um, most of them were just general comments, um, either um, positive feedback on the plan that um, uh, residents were happy with it or unfortunately negative feedback, um, but none of these required any specific action. Based on the comments received, we have made uh, all of the adjustments to the plan. Um, uh, the Planning Commission should have received a final draft of that plan and staff is requesting that um, the Planning Commission recommends adoption of the 2022 South Whitehall Township Comprehensive Plan to the Board of Commissioners. Um, if this board recommends that, it will be uh, submitted to the board to, uh, or I should say the staff will open up for a public hearing that would be announced um, for the adoption of that plan. Yeah, my understanding uh, upon review of the, the revisions and whatnot, um, you've incorporated the, the comments. Um, the, there were, were no comments that necessarily um, resulted in substantial significant changes to the comp plan. There, there were some good comments that um, once we get into the more granular, detailed um, aspects after the comp plan, we can look into more. But um, you know, we've been working on this comp plan for, for months and uh, um, more than months and Four years. years. <laughs> um, I think we're at the finish line where we can uh, direct staff to now move forward with the more detailed investigation and uh, research, at least make a, a recommendation. Anyone have any comments? Does anyone? Uh, I would agree with your comments, and I would just add uh, thank you to all the staff involved for all the work over the years. It's um, a wonderful product, excellent plan, um, very well put together. So thank you. Does anyone want to make a recommendation? I'll make that motion. Second. Greg, could you do a roll call? Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. All right, we're on agenda item number five, subdivision review. The first project on the agenda is Dorney Park Project 2024. Mr. Adams, would you like to do the staff presentation? Uh, 
Yes. This is an application to further develop the property located at 3830 Dorney Park Road. The plan proposes to construct a new 161.67 foot attraction on the site of the Stinger roller coaster just north of the intersection of Lincoln Avenue and Dorney Park Road on a 2.7 acre portion of the 196 acre parcel. The property is served by public water and sewer and is zoned commercial recreation CR. Dorney Park LLC is the owner and applicant. There is a whole slew of history to this, as would be expected in Dorney Park. Well, I will skip directly to the Community Development Department recommendation. Should the sidewalk issue be resolved to the satisfaction of the township, the department recommends that the Planning Commission recommend preliminary final plan approval to the Board of Commissioners, subject to the applicant complying with the following conditions. One, if deemed to be necessary that the applicant shall execute subdivision improvements, security, maintenance, and indemnification agreements acceptable to the township and its solicitor, that sufficient security in a form acceptable to township be posted, that such security shall be available for JAWS presentations no further than 60 miles from the township office, and evidence of insurance coverage in an amount satisfactory to the township in its sole discretion shall be provided prior to the plan being recorded. Two, that the applicant address to the satisfaction of the township engineer the comments of Mr. Anthony Tallarita as contained in his review letter dated February 9, 2023. Three, that the applicant address to the satisfaction township order and sewer engineer, the comments of Mr. Jason Newhart as contained in his review dated February 6, 2023. Four, that the applicant address to the satisfaction of township geotechnical consultant, the comments of Mr. Chris Taylor as contained in his review dated February 7th, 2023. Five, that the applicant address to the satisfaction of the community development department, the comments of Mr. Greg Adams as contained in his review dated February 13, 2023. Six, that the applicant address to the satisfaction of the Public Works Department, the comments of Mr. Herb Bender, as contained in his review dated February 3rd, 2023. Seven, that the applicant complies with the recommendation of the fire marshal, as noted in his review dated February 10th, 2023. Eight, that the applicant complies with the February 10, 2023 recommendation of the Landscape and Shade Tree Commission. Nine, that the applicant obtains a review from LVPC prior to the plan being presented to the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. 10, that the applicant obtains a letter from the LCCD approving the Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Plan pursuant to Section 31239E of Saldo, or that the applicant obtains a letter from PADEP and or LCCD approving the NPDES permit application pursuant to Section 31239E of Saldo. 11, if deemed to be necessary, that the applicant obtains a letter from PADEP approving the sewage facilities planning module or exemption thereto. 12, that the applicant addresses all issues and obtains all approvals necessary, uh, deemed necessary by the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners insofar as matters pertaining to the township's water and sewer service are concerned. 13, that the applicant reconciles all open invoices for township engineering and legal services prior to the plan being recorded. 14, that the plans are to be revised and deemed to be clean prior to them being presented to the Board of Commissioners. And 15, that, that prior to the presentation of the plan to the Board of Commissioners, the applicant submits an application as determined to be appropriate by the township to the township for review and approval of the design and construction of the sidewalk along public road frontage or frontages of the park, the scope of which shall be determined by the township such that the requirements of Saldo Section 31235B3 are deemed to be met for this project. Further, the, prior to the issuance of building permits for the work proposed by Dorney Park Project 2024 plan, the applicant shall execute agreements acceptable to the township and its solicitor, ensuring that such design and construction work are to be accomplished and that sufficient security in a form acceptable to the township be posted, and that such security shall be available for draws presentation no further than 60 miles from the township's office. The Planning Commission's soft deadline to act upon the plan is March 20th, 2023. The Board of Commissioners' hard deadline to act on the plan is April 19th, 2023. All right, the applicant may... Uh... Come and provide your presentation. Please state your name. Good. 
Joe Buba, B-U-B-B-A, Fitzpatrick, Lentz, and Buba, on behalf of Dorney. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm going to ask Jessica Naderman, the, the new GM and VP, to come up in a minute just to explain the, the project. I'm going to circle back and, and deal with the sidewalk issue, but I just want to get some high-level things out of the way first. It's um, really a pretty clean engineering letter. There's recommendations for approval subject to a resolution of the sidewalk issue, which I said I'll talk about in a minute. I think the, the critical part to understand, I've said this many times before, which is why you were able to skip 15 pages of history. This is a little bit like um, moving furniture around in your living room. This, there, there have been rides in this location before. They've, this one's been removed. Another ride is going in the same location. It satisfies the height criteria. It satisfies the design feature criteria that are in <clears throat> that special section of the zoning ordinance for commercial recreation um, uh, um, <clears throat> and amusements specifically. So um, <clears throat> with that very brief outline, I'm going to ask Jessica to come up, talk a little bit about this ride, and then I, as I said, I'll come back and, and talk about the sidewalk. Okay. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. My name is Jessica Naderman. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom. Um, most recently, I uh, started here very recently, so new to the area. Uh, my first day was June 1st. So it's been a pleasure working here and getting to live in the Lehigh Valley. So Welcome to the township. Thank you so much. Um, like Joe was saying, this ride will be built where an existing ride once was. So essentially, it is a replacement. Um, we are not growing or expanding our park in any way. It will be roughly 161 feet tall. And we are working with a reputable ride manufacturer. We have already planned for sound and noise mitigation as part of this project. Um, we want to be a good community partner and we want to be sensitive to historical concerns. So we, we are moving forward in a way that thinks of the community. Um, with this addition of this attraction, I do want to say that we do not anticipate increased traffic or attendance levels compared to historical attendance levels. It's, it's going to be back to hopefully pre-pandemic levels, but we do not think it will exceed um, what we've seen in the past. So with that, I, I appreciate your time and um, look forward to continuing to work with you all. Thank you. Um. Thank you. I mean, the, the, the critical thing for the park is that um, this is a 2024 project. They want it to be operational. And um, I, I, in a way, I could start by saying, why is sidewalk even an issue when this is a replacement ride in the center of the park? And is there truly any new pedestrian walkways or traffic that in any way suggests that sidewalk needs to be done. There's eight streets that abut the park. Um, but everybody, I think everybody here knows that you know, Cedar Fair has been a tremendous partner and they want to work with the township. And when we raise this issue with township staff, township staff has identified an area um, <clears throat> running roughly from Haynes Mill to the uh, entrance of the park where perhaps a sidewalk would make sense. And we're more than willing, as you'll see, to, to, to work with you and, and, and make sure that that's done. The problem is temporal. We, we can't, part of that land isn't even owned by Dorney Park. A large part is owned by PennDOT. Um, as you can see, that whole corner is owned by PennDOT. Despite that, as we said, Dorney will construct that. Um, we just can't tie it to this project directly. We can't say that the occupancy permit will be tied to finishing this sidewalk because there are so many constituents. So if you look on page 82 of your packet, I'm sorry, 85 of, of your packet, at least mine is paginated that way. Is the Planning Commission's paginated that way? 94 and 95. Oh, no, I was looking at this one. 85 first, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. 
if uh, in, in Mr. Adams' letter, this is a this is a further clarification of this decoupling that I'm talking about. The second part of that reads: Should the applicant wish to separate the accomplishment of the improvements, that's a sidewalk, um, from the plan under review, which we certainly want to do, staff recommends that some some form of agreement and security acceptable to the town should be put in place ensuring the accomplishment of the improvements, the execution of which can be made a condition of the approval of the plan under review. That's what we would like to do tonight. We would like to make a commitment, um, but given the fact that there are so many constituents, including Lanta, <clears throat> the, the, the township, actually PennDOT has reached out about some other issues about, about design we couldn't even begin to post security. We have no idea what it looks like. So I have, I'll read this in, in, into the record just very quickly and I'll hand up copies then. We would suggest that as part of the development agreement and Jennifer, I'll hand you one of these. Okay. Our, our idea would be that as part of the development agreement, we would say something like, the applicant agrees to implement a construction plan for a sidewalk in the approximate location shown on exhibit A, which is what was just shown. In light of the various interested parties in any such plan, the applicant shall adhere to the design approval schedule as shown on exhibit B, which I believe is page 95 in your packet, where we would show milestones that we would accomplish with your cooperation. Upon execution of this agreement, this current agreement, the applicant shall fund or replenish the escrow account previously established for the current project for reimbursement of South Whitehall Township professional review of the sidewalk construction plan. We would, we would have that security or escrow posted now because there will be review during this process. And then lastly, I say upon completion and approval, of the final location and design of the sidewalk construction plan, the applicant shall post security in an amount and manner consistent with South Whitehall Township policies, which is when we know what the improvements look like and we submit that to, to Pidcock's office and they say, yes, this is what this design will be, then we would post the, the security. And the interesting thing here is, you know, when, when we did skip all that history, we're not going anywhere. I mean, this is not this is not a developer that puts in 20 townhomes and you really need to make sure that exactly everything is going to happen. We keep coming back, hopefully year after year again. Uh, um, it's been a while, but hopefully year after year, you have a tremendous, you have tremendous leverage, you have a tremendous stick to, to hit us with from time to time, but it just doesn't make sense to tie this to this project and delay this project, particularly when we are committing to a schedule that um, we think ultimately will create the best design for this sidewalk. So that's that's my. What's Stony seconds. Park's What's Stony Park's reasoning for not doing the entire frontage on Hamilton Boulevard and Lincoln? What's the, it, it's it's not. First of all, we're not even sure it's a it's a safe design that people. Want. I agree. I don't think anybody should be walking on Hamilton. Yeah. But we've sat here as a board and made the argument that every plan in South Weddell Township should have sidewalk and curbing. Yeah, and I, I, we've made it some exceptions, Mark. Yeah, since um, I've been here. And and, and and frankly, Mr. Luth, I didn't I didn't want to go in in that direction. I know that's been the position. Um, I think there's a I think there's a real question about whether or not simply because it is a saldo requirement that that it has to be imposed in situations where it doesn't provide the benefit that's that. Yeah. I agree. We had a restaurant staying as a restaurant and we lost the restaurant because we were going to force them to put sidewalk in. And there's a school administration building going in, which is part of the school that's on the same property. And we're making them curb the entire frontage and sidewalk. Yeah, I, 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 all I can say is I, I don't think it's hypocritical for me to sit here and say one guy has to do it, but the other guy doesn't have to. Do it. Yeah, I, and you, and, and just you, because it's Dorney Park, and it's I, just replacing one I think machine to apples another and machine. Oranges. I, I don't, I, I don't see it. I, I see it as black it, and white. Also, also, please remember just you know what the preamble, what the preamble of this says. I mean, which is, 
I do think it's distinguishable because um, if you think about this, this is getting feedback. <laughs> getting feedback. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I, Welcome to 2023 <laughs> technology. I, I do think this, this is some of the distinctions, as Greg notes. This is a, on a 2.7 acre portion of 196 acre parcel. You know, that, that's not development of an entire parcel. It's, it, it, as we said, no pedestrian traffic is being generated by this. So we felt like coming in and suggesting that we're willing to do something when we're not even certain it's, it's the right thing to do. If people think it is, you know, we'll, we'll get that done. I mean, we, we don't want to have a battle where we just say we're not going to do it and challenge your ability to attach that condition. I'm saying attach the condition, just let us do it the right way. If we designed it right now, I think Mr. Tallarita would agree. We have no idea what PennDOT would allow us to do. We don't know if it's 10 feet off the road, 20, rede redesign their detention ponds. We just PennDOT don't know. going to allow them to do it on PennDOT property? Uh, th there's a few instances, but it's not common. So we don't even know that you can build it where you want to build it. But that, but that's. So why not concentrate on the land you do own? And and and, I mean, well, in our conversations with staff, we've been told that there's not a great desire to have the frontage from the driveway up to um, Lincoln completed. So that's why we picked this. Because Where else is there to cross? At Lincoln, yeah. right? Where else we is there to cross I'm, in that stretch of highway? Does anybody, I mean, everybody knows we've had some unfortunate yeah. incidents on, on 222. We don't, we certainly don't. Thorny Park does not, without your direction, want to put people in that location crossing the road. We're just we're just sitting here negotiating about a piece of land that you don't own and South Weddell doesn't own about putting sidewalk. We've we've advised staff of that. Yeah. But staff has asked us to show the sidewalk continuing across the PennDOT property in the hopes that we would have PennDOT agree to allow us to build the sidewalk. What's the contingency plan? at these workshops. We didn't talk about contingency plan B. So if PennDOT doesn't approve it, yeah, we have to go through the active transportation plan, look at the entire corridor, work with PennDOT. Um, didn't you guys already to, have the big plan drawn up for Hamilton Street? It was drawn up, but it was very conceptual. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no engineering done with it. Um, the intent is to look at that corridor um and i suspect it's going to be one of the areas that's highlighted that comes out of active transportation um big concerns are crossing um yeah. so like you mentioned lincoln and haynes mill are the two closest established crosswalks the section of sidewalk that they're proposing connects the Hain the crossing at haynes mill to the entrance so that addresses that. Because of the Lanta bus stop. And there's a Lanta bus stop there. Okay. Apparently, what about, the, what about Plan B? If they don't get that. Plan what B, what we have to do? go as what we are, were. What's Dorney Park going to do? They're, gonna get, they're not going to put any sidewalk in there. If they still have a deferral, when we come to, to an agreement of a plan with PennDOT, LVTS, and all the players involved, that's when we can call in the deferral to contribute to the project that's been approved for the corridor. So they have a deferral on the rest of yes. Hamilton and Lincoln right now? Yes. Yeah, there's multiple deferrals all the way around the property. Did we just say trying... we were calling in all deferrals? We have a process. There's a deferral call-in process with the Board of, um, board of Commissioners. Um, we've gone through that twice, once, um, and, you know, we're going through the process. It's a difficult process, um, but we have a policy in place 
And when items come up or sections come up that are generated either from staff, a public agency, a landowner, to put in a sidewalk, we can implement that policy to call in those sidewalks. So, but so you have a deferral in place already for sidewalk. We're not going to go after the deferral we already have, and we're going to bet it all on someone else's land. Um, we're not get we're not asking to get rid of the deferrals that are in place. Oh, I'm I'm saying why are we not calling in a deferral on Hamilton Street in Lincoln? Because they're before us with the land development now. No, I. So we're not calling in. Well, we could, and it's certainly the board's prerogative if they'd like to call not defer the section of along Hamilton. It's certainly the board's prerogative. Um, the concern is there's no corridor plan for that section, um, and the potential for just like we had the same conversation with the restaurant. There was a concern about having sidewalk on one side and not the other might encourage people to cross the street mid block. And that's the biggest concern is the mid block crossing. Um, so that's one rationale for stopping the sidewalk there. Um, the, we just don't want it. We just don't want to spend the money, which is not the priority, but we just don't want to spend the money and design and build something that ultimately is inconsistent with the corridor improvements and perhaps dangerous because of the design of the entire roadway not being done. That's that's all we're saying. I mean, just I, well, all I can say is I'm sure we have every road and ridge farm that has a curb and a sidewalk. Yes. I'm sure that every new project that comes in, we're going to require a curb and sidewalk. I just don't understand the hypocrisy of getting half the sidewalk and not even on your property. So we have a deferral already. I don't know why we're not calling it in. I, look, the board can vote like they want. I've I've made my statement. I just don't like doing it to the small guy and not doing it to the big guy just because we're all good neighbors. Yeah, yeah, but but it's not just because we're we're we're, we're the big guy. I mean, and I I have to say, I'll use your word. Part of the hypocrisy is there are many people that don't agree that you should not waive it in other circumstances, right? I mean, your position is we haven't waived it, so it would, it would be hypocritical for us to defer it now. And what I'm saying is I think it's important for the township to take a long, hard look at each one of these to decide, does it make sense? Does the location make sense? And then it wouldn't be hypocritical because it would be a case by case review of when it truly serves a purpose. That's when it would be used. You should be focusing on crosswalk alternatives on Hamilton Street. We're arguing about sidewalk that's ultimately going to get someone killed. But I've said what I said. I, I, I don't see the logic in it. I see hypocrisy in it. Yeah, well, I, I will say some of us did vote for sidewalk yes, waivers. Did. I did. I believe on, you on did. the restaurant. Yes. I believe you voted for that w deferral as well. Um, we've all seen people walk along Hamilton mm -hmm. on the on the side of the road. That's definitely not safe. Um, we don't know what the best situation is, but it definitely needs to be investigated. I think we can all agree upon that. And sidewalk along Hamilton, it's going to take time. Number one, it's PennDOT right-of-way. It's not township right-of-way. So it will definitely take a lot of time, and it's something that should be looked into. And tying that sidewalk to one of the rides I don't think is fair because it's just something that is going to take so long, and Dorney Park is making a, a commitment to investigate that. Do we know what the outcome of that investigation is? No, but is this a, a method to start that process? Yes. I have to say, regarding the sidewalk. I I concur with uh, Chairman Wilson. I We've all driven on that road, especially when the park is active. You see people walking on that road on the grass. 
I'd rather them on a sidewalk. This is a start. You're bu- you're making a commitment, pending outside agency approval. Sidewalk. And uh, it becomes a, uh, you're building 1,500 feet. That's over a quarter mile. And not on our frontage, I'm not in, which is more than a commitment we would well, have there's, to make. There's, it's right away. We can go down a rabbit hole it's real this, quick. Actually, that corner is not just right away. That actually is, that's a that's a separate pen dot parcel, but okay. okay. But anyway, at least this will connect to what was done when the Wawa was built. It'll get everybody to Cedar Crest College safely. So that's, you know, and it, I, and like you said, Dorney Park isn't going anywhere. They've been here since 1883 or something like that. So they've been around longer than anybody in this room has been alive. Mm-hmm. For them to make a commitment like this is pretty impressive considering it is 1,500 feet. Comment. Question at, at the same time, uh, kind of to Mark's points, if there's going to be this investigation looking into this 1500 feet, should we at the same time or should somebody at the same time be looking into the deferrals for these other sections of the property? I, I, to see I, what I, a holistic yeah, safety I think, approach is. I think that would be a good conversation starter. At least they're making a commitment for this section, but while we have PennDOT in the room, we can say, hey, what about the rest of this all the way to 78? Yeah. I, I was just going to make that suggestion since we're going to have PennDOT in the room, yep. so to speak, it's an opportunity to talk, to talk to PennDOT and get their opinion on the sidewalk from Hamilton to Lincoln. Right. Um, the condition that was suggested for this portion for the, the approving resolution um, did not stipulate the exact um section of sidewalk so there is some wiggle room in there we mm-hmm. could see what pendot says about that whole corridor and you know ultimately it's going to be their call but at least we have a commitment from dorney on part of that and if we have some sort of agreement that if pendot's okay with the rest of it we could perhaps call in that deferral at that point whether we have to go through the formal process at that point, and, and we and know. we would and we would keep this this contractual commitment in place. And if you look at the first item on the on the milestones, preliminary discussions and meetings with all interested parties, Township LVPC, Conservation District, PennDOT, Lanta, and Dorney Park. We would expect, we would hope, that if we can get PennDOT to talk to us, and things apparently are supposedly getting a little bit better from a communication perspective, that we will hear those exact kind of things. We may hear them say, you know, with our corridor study, we think putting it at Lincoln Avenue makes sense for the following reasons. And we would, come, not only would we come back to you, you'd be part of those meetings and we would deal with it at that point. It, I will tell you what I think staff came up with does seem to make the most sense to us because it creates the Cedar Crest College, to Wawa, the Dorney Park corridor with a, in as safe a manner as possible. That seems to be where traffic does come from. So. That that condition, it, it allows the township the ability to expand that 1,500 linear feet, discuss the other deferral locations and whatnot. Is that accurate to say? Uh, the condition 15 uh, that I had uh, does allow that. It does not specify a specific location for the sidewalk. It just says for an area to be determined by the township. Yeah, and during those meetings, if PennDOT and everybody decides it should go to Lincoln, that's the time to do it. And it's cheaper at Dorney Park to do it all at once than, you know. But just so everybody understands, I'm not – we can't accept 15 as it is because that ties it to the to, to the occupancy permit. We have no problem with the concept that that Greg just described, but we want it decoupled, which is why I used your language on page 85, that we would enter into a contractual agreement saying what we did as opposed to tying it, that the permits would not be issued until that. That's the pillar of your item 15. Does the township attorney feel safer having time to review that agreement? 
can we alter condition number 15 to provide for that absolutely. agreement? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm okay. yes. Okay. Absolutely. And 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 by all means play with my four simple paragraphs. Okay. It'll be part of the development agreement I would I, I will add. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't we want to hone in on the location of this potential sidewalk, though, since there are already existing deferrals in place associated with the frontage of Dorney Park from Lincoln to the entrance? We would want to say it would almost be kind of a, this is now a separate area, but if PennDOT says, well, it should be Lincoln, that's that's calling in a deferral. That That's not really correct. I think we need to maybe wordsmith. We'd have to probably wordsmith the agreement to kind of add that language in since there's deferrals already out there. That That's kind of different. I think that's, that's kind of different than what, what we're talking happen. about I right now. I think that's effectively what would happen if PennDOT said, as an example, no one's going to build on our property, but we'd like a sidewalk from Lincoln to, you know, the main driveway. We would obviously have a discussion with them about, is that the safest thing to do? But I think if they said that, and that's where it ended, you would call in that deferral. Am I answering your question? You are, you okay. are, and, and I'm just, I continue to think about though, as it isn't sketched out now, it's a little bit of a wish list, I'd say, because of the PennDOT property, but we kind of lose that leverage, so to speak, as the township, because you kind of, we're calling in an existing deferral, this to me would go away, and would almost, right? the section between Haynes Mill and the yeah. driveway? Because if PennDOT says, oh, Lincoln in the entrance is better, this Haynes Mill to the entrance becomes Again, good, it, it, goes, it goes away. Yeah, I think I know. So, so with it's kind of at the mercy. So request for another deferral yes. is what I'm getting at. Yes. Sorry. I think no, I the deferrals are what we have in our back pocket, so to speak. Um, and it's really going to come down to where PennDOT thinks the sidewalk should go. Um, we can certainly make our recommendations and work with LVPC and LVTS and um, LTAP and, you know, bring out Lanta, bring out all the guns, so to speak, um, to try and get a sidewalk there and work with PennDOT to determine where the, what makes the most sense and what they're comfortable with. Yeah, I'm not trying to derail the concept here. I, I get where we're going with this, but I just want to make sure we're all the bases are covered. That's all. I, I I think if I'm hearing the township collectively, the constituencies in the township, they want to make it clear. They want to make it clear to us and you have that there are deferrals already hanging out there that theoretically you could call in regardless of this issue. That's what I think you're saying. We understand that. We understood that walking in. So, yeah. and, and it is a process. We went through this with the Wawa. Yeah. It was supposed to be on the north side, then it was the south side. It went back and forth. So at the end of the day, where they put it at the Wawa is a good start. I think everybody does understand why we have to decouple this from this ride, right? It's just that this, this would be a killer for us. Right. You know, so. Well, a key question I have is, what is the ride? <laughs> <laughs> and, well, see, and I was going to fall. Once we got off the sidewalk, we were going to talk about so the heights of the right and what's the view from yeah, cedar brook because yeah. they're doing a massive expansion and so you know, so um, my mother's in cedar brook right now so, so she she'll like the fireworks all i show. can say is she'll love it um <laughs> so <laughs> uh i for truly for competitive reasons cedar fair just can't identify the actual ride you can imagine why that doesn't mean we're trying to hide something from you we're telling you height we're telling you the footprint, the fall zone, all of those things that are important. Um, we're telling you that Cedar Fair spent money on the sound deafening um, part of the the ride. Already entered into a purchase order. Sure, but they but they they're doing that if they haven't done that already. Um, I assume you can say it's steel. I'll tell you. Yeah, it's a steel it's a steel roller coaster that at one point will be approximately 161 feet high and be roughly in the footprint of Stinger, the long lineal footprint of of, of Stinger. Um, and um, it when we have this much lead time on projects, it's just really 
difficult for an amusement park to be competitive by identifying what their secret's going to be in two years. Understood. There were some fire inspector comments about, um, and this is on page 82 of the packet. Chris, you may, may need you. So, okay. What? Um, page 82. Okay. Yeah, yeah our, our project engineer is here. He can probably help with some of these. And I just want to ensure if you'll be accommodating those comments. 1A and B, yeah. you'll work with the, the fire de yes. department. Yes, yes. Chris Williams from Barry Isett and Associates. So our plan is to work with township staff and the fire marshal to, uh, to rectify all these comments. I think it, it shouldn't really be an issue. Also, the, uh, the township indicated um, they'd like to uh, provide some flow meters in the sanitary manholes. Just want to verify. Do that. You, you really don't want me to address that. We'll, com <laughs> we'll comply. <laughs> we'll comply. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have any additional? Well, I just want to make a comment that when the last time Dorney Park was before us in 2020. We brought up the sidewalk, so I'm glad it was not forgotten yeah. by our staff or by the applicant. Yep. So it's a start. Would I love to see it across the whole thing? Yeah, but at least we know once we start this process for the sidewalk, then we know what PennDOT ultimately has envisioned, if anything. If, if a safe design can be done, we don't, you know, Mm -hmm. we, we we just want to make sure that that's the case and someone just doesn't say you're on H Street, so put sidewalks up, whether it hurts or helps. That's really what we're trying to avoid. And I understand your point, Mr. Lewis. I just I, I follow the meetings. Full wormhole we're opening up with PennDOT. Yeah. Who's going to maintain it? Who's going to be liable for it? Who's going to do all I have a feeling things. I know the answer to that. So, <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else for? Us questions. Anyone in the audience or online? So let's start with anybody in the audience for public comment, and then we'll move on to virtual, and we'll I'll describe how to handle the virtual comments. So anybody in the audience? Seeing none. Um, so if you would like to comment online, please type your name and your address in the chat box. I will try and unmute. If not, I will read your question. So Colin, you typed a question, please put your ad name and address in. So I, I'm not going to read any comments unless there's a name and address. Okay, Colin, I'm going to Petra, Petra Gianni, 178 Wilson Ave, Aberdeen, New Jersey. His question is: Will the roller coaster have a lift hill or launch? <laughs> Jessica is find out in twenty. Find out in 2024. <laughs> It, it, we, I think as, the answer is stay tuned. As soon as I know, I will tell you how that. <laughs> um, Brandon Hackaluk, 3726 Dartmouth Road, Allentown, PA. Let me message above. Why don't you make the hotels create a bridge across Hamilton? Um, we've certainly, that's part of the conversation with the whole corridor. Um, and how to get a safe crossing there. There, there, and, there. There's been a proposal in the past, which PennDOT then said we, you know, could not be done. So that's kind of the that's kind of the moving pieces that we're we're dealing with. So. Yeah, there's been a proposal for a bridge, a tunnel. Uh, the problem is, is wherever you put the bridge, somebody's going to try to cross at a different spot. So we have a similar question from Kelly. On Cle Kelly Cleveland on Street, <laughs> Allentown, PA. Um, again, 
talking about a safe bridge and a bus stop. We've certainly been in conversations with Lanta um, and Dorney Park. We've had conversations um, and meetings and looking at this entire corridor is a priority. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Dorney Park is aware that a lot of their employees do take Lanta. I see their employees out there at the bus stop, so they're aware. And PennDOT and us and everybody else. And biking to work. And biking, multimodal. So the questions are coming quickly here. <laughs> um, Colin, 3411, Quakertown, PA. Is there a length of the roller coaster yet? I think that's going to be a similar answer. Um, will sand be used to lessen the noise of this roller coaster? There, there are sound deafening, the cutting edge sound deafening um, package that is being put in the coaster, but because this is, that's what Cedar Fair now does. So, but not for the riders. Not for the, yeah, the riders <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Dave Arth. 4230 Winchester Road, please type your question in. Has the manufacturer worked with Dorney before? No comment. Elijah, Quakertown, PA, type your question. Oh, where to go? What is the whole thing with the sidewalk? I missed it. Um, <laughs> It'll be in the minutes next month. Or, yeah. so. <laughs> or, or is that just you, Dave? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Colin at 3411 Quaker Town. Could this involve B and M? Again, no comment. <laughs> All right, so so we understand um, information regarding the ride um, is not going to be revealed. Um, so is there any way we can limit those types of, of questions? Bradley Gold, 18064 Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Brad, Bradley, if you have a question, not related to the details of the ride, please type it in the chat. You can, you can tell from the addresses, probably, most likely, what their inquiry is going to be. Well, it's good that there's, there's enthusiasm about For, a ride. See, we're also. generating this thing. <laughs> Our response is, are you a season ticket holder? <laughs> I guess the... Question is, will the uh -oh, will the Zephyr train be moved back to accommodate the size of the coaster? Will the coaster use an IP for theming or that's a, yeah, those are no comments. But Zephyr's not being impacted. Yeah, Zephyr will not be impacted. Um, are there any changes to the overall Dorney Park this year? I think that's as far as the land development, this is the only thing we're seeing. So just so everybody's aware, we have a lot of people online. We have to kind of keep the mute in control. So that's why we're going through this process. So are there any changes to the overall Dorney Park this year? More to come. All right, um, looking through the agenda packet, 
There looks to be a, a number of waiver requests. Uh, is the, Typically, um, when there's a waiver request, uh, we receive a letter uh, providing the justification and reasoning for the waiver requests. You have that in your oh, We do? Yep. Mr. Tallarita, you have that, correct? Yeah. It should be in the packet, too. And, and there's comments. There's 91. Yep. OK. I would say there's 91. generally favorable comments on the waiver request. And, um, we'll need to go through the, um, the waiver requests. Um, all right, so I'm looking at page 91. I'm not sure you need me to read them completely. Um, if you want me to, I can. It's up. Yeah, I, I, th I think, should we just go one we'll, by one we'll through them through. And, and make a vote on each single and one? And if we have a question yeah. on okay. a specific one, then we'll All right, so I'll you. just let you read, and then yep. you can decide. So the first uh, waiver request is Saldo Section 312, 12B14, waiver of the requirement to show bearings and distances of the tract and ties to the nearest U.S. Geological Survey monument. I'm, Go off of it. Yeah, I'm reading the wrong one. <laughs> section 312, 12B15. And this section of the ordinance requires that contours on the entire tract and on adjacent land within 400 feet of the tract be shown. Tony, do you have any um, engineering objection to this waiver? Um, we, we do not see an engineer objection. It could be accomplished by the developer's team if uh, the board so chooses, but we don't have an objection. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. objection. Pretty yeah. common waiver request, and we've granted it. I'll make a, I'll make a motion to I'll, approve. A second. Greg, would you like to do the roll call? Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Great. Waiver request number two, Saldo section 312, 12B21. This section of the ordinance requires that all sidewalks, trails, driveways, streets, easements, and right-of-way streets, easements, and rights of way platted or existing within 400 feet of the site be shown on the plans. This is very similar to waiver request number one. I don't have any objections. No objection. I'll make a motion. Grant the section 312-12 B21. A second. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Waiver request number three, Saldo section 312, 12B17. This section of the ordinance requires the names of owners of immediately adjacent land and the names of existing or proposed subdivisions to be shown on the plan. Similar waiver request. I don't have any objection. No objection. I'll make a motion. Second. To approve. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Waiver request number four, Saldo section 312, 12B14. This section of the ordinance requires boundaries of the track showing bearings and distances to be shown on the plans. Similar, I don't have any objection. No, no objection. Make a motion to approve. Second. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Andrew Flagg. Sorry. Brian Height. Here. <laughs> you, 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 you threw me there because I was ready to go. <laughs> I'm used to being three tonight, so. Aye. Was that an aye or aye? aye. You threw me with Diane the Kelly. Flag. Aye. <laughs> 
Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Waiver request number five, Saldo Section 312.14b3. This section of the ordinance requires sufficient data be shown on the plans to determine readily the location, bearing, and length of every street, lot, and boundary line, and to reproduce such lines upon the ground, including a survey tie-in to the three nearest established street monuments. Uh, once again, it's a, a similar um, waiver request. I don't have any objections. No objection. Someone like to make a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second to approve. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. All right. And I, I may have some questions about this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Waiver request number six. Saldo section 312-43. This section of the ordinance requires that all that permit shall not be issued until the plan is approved by the Board of Commissioners and recorded. And the reasoning for the waiver request is since this project is simply replacing a recently removed attraction rather than an actual park expansion, we are requesting a waiver from this section so that permits could be issued prior to the plan being recorded, but after receiving approval from the Board of Commissioners. A waiver from this section would allow the park to begin construction immediately after receiving approval from the Board of Commissioners and receiving the NIPTES permit and would increase the likelihood that construction is completed prior to park opening in spring 2024. Mr. Wilson, I'll, I'll add to the, to the, the, the I guess it's the reasoning. This is something that has been granted in the past. I've worked with the solicitor's office to assure you know, that the township's not at, at risk and on this pre-recording construction. And so I think it's also a practical uh, request. I would say, does township staff have any concerns with this? If there are any public improvements and I if, if things work out the way they are, there won't be. Um, then it's a few other outside agency approvals um, and maybe a few cleanup items. Uh, certainly, township staff would ensure that there is no risk to the township um, with uh, releasing the permits uh, prior to plan recording. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you have listed on your conditions number one and number 13, you had, uh, you know, prior to plan being recorded. You're right, one is about improvements, one's about open invoices. Do you, in the in the past, have you tied the certificate of occupancy or operation to plan recording? In the past, we have. I'm asking, have you in the past? In the, in the past, we have. However, I think moving forward, we may revisit that. Uh, we are working on a ordinance amendment to, to add something other than certificate of occupancy to which to tie these things to. So. This would also help you in your construction time frame. It's right, but we're building at our own risk. Right. A, so, uh, and frankly, we don't go vertical. That's so that's the other. Is there any comment from our solicitor? I was just going to add to what Greg said by saying that they will be required to post the security and sign the agreements prior to allowing them to move forward. Thank you. So the township's protected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's our first consideration. I don't have any objection. I'll make a motion to approve that motion. I'll second. Or waiver. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Waiver request number seven, Saldo section 312.13 F3. 
This section of the ordinance requires that permits shall not be issued until the plan is recorded. Similar to six. Yes. Same situation. Um, we discussed number six. Um, I, I don't have any objection. Um, solicitor. Same protections. Same. <laughs> With that, I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Reverend Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Before you read the next, I just have one open question. I apologize. The, do you, and, and this is probably for Chris, the engineer, is there an open NEPTIS on that site right now? <laughs> like, is it continuously in, or do you have to apply for a new NEPTIS for this particular project? Because I'm sure it's not an acres worth of disturbance. Yeah, there is an open NEPTIS permit for the site. Okay. So just like a modification, minor mod. I believe this is a modification of that. They walk it right yeah. down the street to their office. Yep. Yeah. All right. Waiver request number eight. Saldo section 312, 12B20. This section of the ordinance requires that a plan show the location, character, and elevation of any building within 100 feet of the tract. Similar, um, just a, a plan item. I don't have any objection. No objection. I'll make a motion. Section 312-12B20. I'll second it. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Great. Waiver request number nine, and um, this will uh, this is solve the sidewalk. On its section, Saldo section 312.35b3, this section of the ordinance requires improvements along public streets. We are requesting, um, the applicant is requesting a deferral from this section. Can I, can I, can I suggest that, that, Perhaps appropriately, the, the Planning Commission would recommend granting that deferral subject to the addition of the language in the development agreement regarding the commitment on the sidewalk. I would go one step further and suggest revising condition number 15 to require that an agreement be executed prior to recording of this plan that addresses that sidewalk construction. Not, and not, not goes into the detail of requiring the security that you're objecting to, but I think we need a condition that addresses that that is to be done. In Prior to the recording of. And it would still incorporate your proposal here, such yeah, as. All, yeah, all, all, I, I think that's fine. All it means is that I'm, as we get close to the point where we're going to do a development agreement, right, I'm going to really need to, to, to push that issue, right, because we don't want that. If, if the development agreement doesn't get done for a period of time, that would mean that we couldn't we couldn't add that language in. So, um, it, just say again what you said that that this would be a, con, a condition to. I, I think we replace con, what Greg has written as condition number 15 and require instead that the applicant execute an agreement satisfactory to the township and the solicitor's okay. office providing for what you put in this proposal here, which is a construction plan for the sidewalk, yep. okay. not designate any specific area because that's to be decided, yep. um, not require security because obviously right. we don't know yet what that is to be, but it leaves it open-ended, but still requires you to execute an agreement. Yeah, so I think using the word agreement as opposed to the development agreement will just make me feel more comfortable that we could theoretically separate that if we need it to, if we were still working on the development agreement. Is that acceptable? I mean, both are agreements, so yeah. I'm not sure. I... Okay. Okay, so um, where we stand right now, um, the the engineering review was clean and engineering was recommending approval. <laughs> I, I think we need to Get the verbiage for this um, final condition. 
please. I, w I was just going to say the the section needs to we need to be clear that it's deferring for all the public streets. And then on top of that would be this agreement. It should reference the exhibit that they provided. Both exhibits, both the sketch and, this, and the, the, the milestones. That's acceptable, Tom. But, you, but you're asking for yes. the language. So, so who's going to come up with the... <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have a general agreement, but the actual words. Words matter. Yes. Yes, they do. Solicitor have a suggestion. <laughs> well, I think I just said part of it, right, Greg? You did, yes. Okay. Um, that the applicant agrees to execute an agreement satisfactory to both the township and the solicitor's office, providing for a construction plan for the sidewalk. And the fun proper funding of an escrow account. For the areas agreed upon. Prior to the recording of the plan for this project. Yeah. And Tony may have something to add. He's whispering in my ear and I can't hear him. <laughs> do, you want, do you want security? Well, I think that was the issue that so oh, we can't yeah. require security at this stage because we don't know exactly but this, what it but is. my language yeah. obligates us to post security exactly. once the design is done. Right. And was there um, verbiage in terms of separating sidewalk from the actual ride? And this, this does it for us. Okay, okay. The, the eventual agreement will need to indemnify the township uh, as well, and they'll have to provide secure, uh, certificate of insurance, correct? You mean the, like the agreement down the road when we start building? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. A an additional other legal mumbo jumbo. We'll yeah. Say. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm like the ride, it's to be determined. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll reveal that later. Okay, could I read that back to you? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, I wasn't just specifically to you. Um, this is condition 15, replacing the existing condition 15, that the applicant execute an agreement to the satisfaction of both the township and the solicitor's office, providing for sidewalk and funding an escrow account as agreed upon prior, as agreed upon prior to the recording of the plan for this project. Now, I mean, we all know what that said, but in a vacuum, when you when you read that, it sounds like we're building a sidewalk. Well, one day you are. For, yeah, providing for <laughs> sidewalk and the funding yeah, in so an escrow I mean, account. That yeah. sounds so. Maybe you want to wait for this waiver till the next time you come in. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know how. There's there's a probably a lot to this waiver that I don't I I really I really don't think I, we can I, all look at it. I think I think that we could use the actual language, realizing you're gonna that, that you're going to change it, which that the parties will enter into an agreement, which generally encompasses the following. And then it would be the applicant agrees to implement a construction plan for a sidewalk in the approximate location shown on Exhibit A. In light of the various interested parties in any such plan, the applicant shall adhere to da da da. Upon execution of this agreement, applicant shall fund or replenish the escrow account upon completion and approval of final location. So if we add it that specific language as to what the agreement will say then it won't sound like we're saying we're building a, a, a sidewalk before before we're pulling the permits. So but what um, none of that says is what happens when PennDOT says no, that we're going to call the deferrals on the rest of the frontage. I, I think, Mark, that we can address that in the actual agreement itself. 
um, because mm. all we're doing is requiring an agreement that requires them to propose a plan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're 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 not we're, we're not even being treated in a, in a way we're making more of a commitment than someone that's getting a full deferral. We're saying, please give us the deferral, and you have other ones out there, and we're not trying to impact those. But on top of that, let us give you this commitment on at least this this sidewalk. That's that's what we're trying to. Yes, and that's get what across. I'm trying to do by making it still a condition and not removing it entirely. So oh, I said, if we instead of just saying an agreement for the sidewalk, if we said an agreement which incorporated conceptually the following four points, and we added these, I think we'd have the sketch, we'd have the milestone, all of those things would be part of the actual resolution. I have a question for the solicitor, or maybe it's for staff. If we vote on this tonight with the language that's being proposed in between now and the time that this goes before the Board of Commissioners, if there needs to be slight edits to that language, is that permissible to move forward with agreements between the township and the developer? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so we're, we're on a uh, waiver request number nine, which um, is once again saldo section 31235b3 and it's uh, requesting a deferral subject to condition revised condition number 15. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Nay. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes five to one. Okay, so those are the uh, waivers and deferrals. The waivers and deferrals. Now um, we're on to the Planning Commission decision. <coughs> Just want to make sure, are, are there any other uh, comments or questions from anyone in the audience or anyone online? Not for our specific related. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we discussed the, the sidewalk in, in great detail, and I, I think we made a decision on uh, the, the waiver request. Um, the engineering review uh, recommended approval. Um, it's clean, uh, clean uh, design. Um, I think we can move forward with uh, making a, a decision. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make that motion with the 15 conditions. I'll second. And that is the revised condition 15. Revised condition 15. Thank you. Okay. As discussed. Discussed. We have a motion and second. Roll call vote. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good luck with your project. All right, we're on agenda item number five, B. This is the Parkland School District New Operations Center. Mr. Adams, would you like to do the staff presentation? Yes. This is 
an application to further to develop the property located at 2016, I'm sorry, 2619 Stadium Drive. The plan proposes to raise the existing structure and construct a two-story 39,295 square foot building, 90 parking spaces, and associated stormwater management facilities on the 8.70 acre parcel. The property is served by public water and is zoned rural residential RR2. Parkland School District is the owner and applicant. Uh, previous consideration uh, at the December 15th, 2022 meeting, the Planning Commission reviewed and took under advisement the preliminary and final plan. Uh, at their September 15th, 2022 meeting, they reviewed the sketch plan. So straight to the recommendation. The department recommends that the Planning Commission recommend preliminary final plan approval to the Board of Commissioners subject to the applicant complying with the following conditions. One, that the applicant shall execute in subdivision improvement, security, maintenance, and indemnification agreements acceptable to the township and its solicitor. That sufficient security in a form acceptable to the township be posted. That such security be available for draws presentations no more than 50, 60 miles from the township's office and evidence of insurance coverage and an amount satisfactory to the township in its sole discretion shall be provided prior to the plan being recorded. Two, that the applicant addressed to the satisfaction of township engineer the comments of Mr. Anthony Tallarita as contained in his review dated February 9, 2023. Three, that the applicant addressed to the satisfaction of township water and sewer engineer the comments of Mr. Jason Newhard as contained in his review dated February 6, 2023. Four, that the applicant addressed to the satisfaction of township geotechnical consultant the comments of Mr. Chris Taylor as contained in his review dated February 3, 2023. Five, that the applicant addressed the satisfaction of the Community Development Department. The comments of Mr. Greg Adams as contained in his review dated February 10, 2023. Six, that the applicant addressed the satisfaction of the Public Works Department. The comments of Mr. Herb Bender as contained in his review dated February 3, 2023. Seven, the applicant obtains a letter from the LVPC approving the drainage plan. Eight, that the applicant obtains a letter from PADEP and or LCCD approving the NPDES permit pursuant to section 31239E of SALDO. Nine, that the applicant obtains a letter from PADEP approving the sewage facilities planning module or exemption there too. 10, that the school district and the township agree to monitor the operation of the intersection at, of Lime Kiln Road and PA Route 309 after the facility is open. At any time that the township or the district identify unacceptable delays or queuing on the westbound Lime Kiln Road approach, as predicted, as predicted in the TIS, it shall be the obligation of the school district to study the intersection, provide analysis to the township and to PennDOT, and pursue all requested upgrades of each the township and or PennDOT. Eleven that the applicant complies with the February 10, 2023 recommendation of the Parks and Rec Board. 12, that the applicant addresses all issues and obtains all approvals deemed necessary by the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners insofar as matters pertaining to the township's water and sewer service are concerned. 13, that the applicant shall dedicate additional right-of-way for Lime Kiln Road to achieve the ultimate right-of-way for a collector road. The dedication shall occur prior to the plan being recorded. The dedication shall be by deed of dedication and form acceptable to township solicitor and an opinion and record title shall be prepared by the applicant's council indicating the dedication is free and clear of liens and encumbrances that would affect the township's use of said property. The applicant shall furnish the township solicitor a description of the dedication that has been approved by the township engineer and a copy of the current deed for the property showing the current ownership and recording information. 14 that the applicant shall dedicate additional right-of-way for Stadium Drive to achieve the ultimate right-of-way for a local road. The dedication shall occur in the same manner as the previous. 15, that the applicant shall dedicate to the township a utility easement of sufficient size in an area acceptable to the township for accessing the water meter pit. The dedication shall occur in a manner the same as previous. 16, that the applicant coordinates with the township engineer's office to have addresses signed to the record to the plan of record. 17, that the applicant shall execute a dedication of covenants and easements for the maintenance of stormwater management facilities prepared by the township solicitor for the maintenance of the on-site stormwater management facilities. 18, that the applicant reconciles all open invoices for township engineering and legal services prior to the plan being recorded. And 19, that the plans are to be revised and deemed to be clean prior to them being presented to the board of commissioners. 
The Planning Commission's soft deadline to act on the plan is March 20th, 2023. The Board of Commissioners' hard deadline to act on the plan is April 19th, 2023. Uh, good evening, Scott McMacken with Cowan Associates, the uh, project engineer. Um, so we, we did discuss this project in a, a fair amount of detail at the December meeting, so I'm not going to um, uh, go over go over that with everybody. But um, really, um, as Greg mentioned, uh, we, we did resubmit the plans. I think we have, we're at the point now where we uh, have a fairly clean letter from uh, from Tony and from the other consultants. Uh, all the all the remaining issues are uh, minor cleanup type. Uh, items that uh, are will complies uh, as far as we're concerned. Um, we did go over uh, most of the waivers at the at the previous meeting. I did have one additional waiver that I, I submitted um, to the Planning Commission. It's on page 149. Uh, it's kind of a minor technical waiver regarding the uh, doing soil augers um, on the site. So we would be requesting that additional waiver tonight. Uh, but other than that. Um, we're just here for any questions, but we'll be requesting the uh, preliminary and final uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission this evening. Thank you. All right, I guess we can um, get started with the, the auger testing. Um, you want to give a little background on the reasoning yeah the, there's a little um the, the chris's comment is uh is on page 123 um as part of the the soil testing for the infiltration uh in your ordinance requires um soil augers in, in addition to uh, infiltration pits um, we had done a, a fairly substantial amount of additional geotechnical work in terms of borings uh, for, for the building for the structural design for the building uh, and elsewhere on the site uh, which basically goes above and beyond what soil augers would provide. Um, so we just, uh, you know, mentioned that to, to Chris, and he's, you know, he, he agrees with it that we he has no objection to the granting of that waiver, but said we technically need still need a waiver from it, uh, essentially with the the other work that we had done geotechnically on the site. Um, that soil augers really wouldn't give us any additional information. So you've you've done test pits. Get the big backhoe, and that shows the whole soil arising. And we've done small. we've done a, a, a fair um, probably about 18 borings as well, where we went down about 70 feet um, and did some rock cores and everything for the for the structural design of the building as well. So that's you know again above and beyond what the soil augers would would provide, and, and Chris was was happy with that. That's supplemental auger testing. That's specific to basins, though, right? It's not necessarily the borings you did for the building. Correct. So, yeah, but we did some additional borings outside of the building envelope too while we had the while we had the uh, equipment out there. Were they within the basin though? Which yes. is where that auger testing would be. Yes, there was there was one or two borings where the where the basins were. Okay. Was it a pretty thick soil column in general or was it variable with rock and soil? Uh no, the the, the shallowest rock we hit was about uh, I think about 18 feet, so it was it was a pretty good you know the soils actually out there were were, were pretty good. Okay. I mean the rock varied, but the the shallowest was about 18 feet. And that was in the basin or the building? No, or the just building. General. Okay. Yeah. Did you hit any rock in the basin? Basins um, proposed. Basins were somewhere north of 25 feet, somewhere in 20, 25, 28 feet, somewhere if I remember correctly. Anyone else have any comments? About that? I have a question regarding the water line. Um, since you and I had, had prior discussions about that, um, the water line is shown on page 107 in your packets for the commission members. But um, my concern was that it was proposed to run through a private driveway right. area. Um, and I believe you had told me in our conversation that that was going to be changed. If you could just confirm that and describe where it would be located instead yeah what, what we're going to do you can kind of see it comes kind of comes out of the basin and angles kind of down to the left uh, across that that uh, it's an abandoned road or driveway for the adjacent residential parcel what we're going to do is come out of the basin more directly left um, and 
tie into the and tie right into Lime Kiln Road uh, out at the road, so we won't have any interaction with the with the driveway at all. So just you know, it'll add a little bit length you know length of pipe, but you know it's going to be cleaner coming out you know essentially right there, yeah, right right where that comes out, and then and then head down along Lime Kiln. Has that been coordinated with Township Engineering? Yes. I did have a question for the solicitor um, on page 115 of uh, Tony's letter under section E. There's a comment that the solicitor may wish to comment on general note, which states the plan was prepared without benefit of a title report and whether a title report would be required. Yeah, we we can we can probably remove that. No, it shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. I'd make one comment. I, I recognize that the um, Landscape and Shade Tree Commission, um, you know, did provide. Uh, a note that the plan is acceptable right but if possible to look for a uh, more native sh uh, street tree in replacement of the golden rain tree yeah the comment um can you repeat that and i I'll yeah. certainly look at it uh more native shade tree uh, in replacement of the golden rain tree okay yes we can do that Thank you. I think overall the plan really hasn't changed a whole lot from when we were here in December. We, you know, fine tune things and clean some stuff up, but it's really pretty much the same plan that, that you guys just saw in uh, you guys saw in December. Great. Well, um, I think we need to address the the waiver. Um, anyone want to? Make a, a motion. Oh, well, first off, uh, anyone in the audience or online have any questions or comments? No. No. Nothing. Okay. All right. And all right. Let's move. Let's uh, move forward with the the waiver request. Um, seems like you did substantial um, invest soils investigation. Um, that's sufficient. Do you recall what page that waiver request letter? Uh, it was on page this one, conference one forty-nine. Will now be recorded. Muted. Corded. Muted. Corded. Muted. Corded. Muted. Corded. Muted. It, yeah, I, I don't have any objections to that uh, waiver request. It seemed like Chris Taylor, the geotech engineer, said it is justified. Anyone want to make a motion? Make the motion. A second. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. I'm going to abstain. Diane, Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes five to zero with one abstention. <clears throat> All right. Um, anyone up here have any more questions or comments? Go ahead. Great. Um, Tony, your engineering review 
did it recommend we recommended approval yes okay all right i i don't have any questions um does anyone want to make a motion i'll make a motion to grant the conditional approval on greg's 19 comments the condition um, Take out the title report language on note one, general use note one. I think that was it. I'll second. Sorry. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Abstain. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes five to zero with one abstention. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. Appreciate Thank you. it. <clears throat> All right, we're on agenda item number five C. 4741 Houseman <coughs> Road, and it's really Chapman's Road, right? That's correct, really <laughs> Chapman's Road. Yep. Um, Flex Warehouse Facility 2022. Mr. Adams, would you like to do the staff presentation? Yes. This is an application for conditional use approval for the warehouse use at 4741 Chapman's Road. The applicant proposes a warehouse and distribution use within the existing warehouse that proposes a greater amount of traffic than the previously approved warehouse and distribution use. The subject property is served by public water and sewer is zoned IC1, industrial commercial one, special height limitation. Riverbend South Whitehall Properties 1 LLC is the owner and applicant. Um, at your January 19th, 2023 meeting, the Planning Commission reviewed and took under advisement this project. Um, the prior project was to, um, I'm sorry, 4741 Chapman's Road Flex Warehouse Facility 2019, uh, which was granted approval by the Board of Commissioners uh, at their October 16th, 2019 meeting. Uh, at that same meeting, they also approved the conditional use for that, I believe. Hmm. Uh, we have two... Uh, agency comments. We have the township engineer as a review letter dated February 10th, 2023, and his comments pertain to peak hour timing, intersection improvements, timing of traffic counts, submission requirements, plan detail, comments from other township commissions, and possible land development plan changes. Uh, the zoning officer has a comment letter as well dated February 13th, 2023. Her comments pertain to uh, zoning, a zoning comment to the revised site plan, compliance with general con additional use standards and criteria and compliance with the warehousing and distribution specific standards and criteria. Um, the department recommends that the application be taken under advisement to allow the applicant to address the reviewing agency's comments contingent upon a completed waiver from the time limitation to review the application being submitted to the township prior to formal action being taken. The, town, the department also recommends the Planning Commission consider the following as a reasonable condition to recommend to the Board of Commissioners to attach to the approval of the plan. And that condition is that the applicant provides safe and protected pedestrian access from the former truck parking lot, now proposed as a distant employee parking lot, to the employee entrance or entrances of the tenant space by way of a hardscape sidewalk and or protected walkway to the satisfaction of the township. The Planning Commission hard, de uh, hard deadline to act on the plan is February 26th, 2023. That's uh, 10 days away. The Board of Commissioners hard deadline to act on the plan is March 28th, 2023. Good evening. My name is Dan Rally with the firm of Saul Ewing. I'm here tonight representing the applicant so you may remember this project from last month's planning commission meeting. And as Mr. Adams mentioned, this is a warehouse distribution use that was previously approved by conditional use in 2019 and then was subsequently constructed. Um, now we're proposing a new tenant 
which is a Walgreens distribution center in a portion of the building. The, the Walgreens fits the previously approved use. However, the anticipated traffic is different than what was previously approved. Um, it really boils down more or less to there's less trucks than was previously approved and there's more cars with this use than was previously approved. So we're here essentially to amend the previous conditional use approval as it relates to traffic. Um, we see tonight's meeting for us, for our purposes, as providing a status update to the commission since last month's um, uh, meeting, which we're in front of you, and we would anticipate coming back in March. So you may remember at last month's meeting, there was a discussion regarding tra updating traffic counts to be done while school is still in session. In the time since last month's meeting, we've completed those new traffic study counts and revised our traffic impact study to incorporate those counts. We submitted a revived traffic impact study to the township and PennDOT to address outstanding comments. Uh, you may also remember Chapman Road is a state road, so PennDOT's review and approval is of primary importance since they will be the ones issuing the highway occupancy permit. Uh, we're anticipating having PennDOT's uh, review and approval prior to your March hearing or March meeting, I should say. So at that point, we'd be back in front of you to discuss the PennDOT review and traffic in a little more detail. Uh, we also submitted a response letter to the Township Engineers Review Letter, along with our traffic impact study. Uh, we've not received a subsequent letter from the, the Township Engineer, but we would also anticipate having that prior to the March hearing. Um, although this property was previously approved for the use, and really the, the only substantive change that we're proposing is, is related to traffic, the commission requested at the last hearing that we provide a narrative going through each of the conditional use standards uh, under the zoning code. We've provided that narrative that is in your agenda packet. Um, I'll leave it to the discretion of the commission. If you want us to orally go through that narrative letter or the written uh, suffices, it has been reviewed by the township zoning officer. That review is also in your agenda packets. Um, I, I believe her letter shows that in her opinion, we have met all the conditional use standards outside of the ones that uh, we address in our traffic impact study that's still subject to review. Um, so that's that's really the update on the status since last month's meeting. I will bring up Kevin Horvath, who is our uh, civil engineer to touch on some of the comments in the most recent uh, review letter from the engineer. Good evening. Kevin Horvath with Keystone Consulting Engineers. I'm the project engineer. Uh, in referring to the township's review packet, the Pidcock Engineering Review begins on page 162, and we get into the traffic comments on page 163. I will defer to Scott Pasterski to discuss traffic questions, so I'm going to skip to page 164. Uh, beginning with item two, uh, confirm with the township staff information meets all narrative uh, of all the conditional use submission requirements. We do have the township uh, zoning officers review, and I'll subsequently get into that. But we believe we have provided information and met those standards with the exception of a few, which I will discuss. Uh, item three, uh, notice notes that uh, we should identify paved areas, uh, I'm sorry, concrete areas within loading dock and trailer parking areas. These areas are identified on the plan, albeit through use of a, a concrete hatch. They are shown on the site plan, and they're more or less dolly aprons uh, in the remote area, as well as a fully uh, paved concrete surface adjacent to the rear of the building. Um, item four brings up the idea of uh, site circulation and intermingling of car and truck traffic as well as pedestrian traffic and touches on the item previously raised regarding the need to provide a safe pedestrian walkway from the remote parking area to the north of the site to the rear entrance of the building at the uh, northwest corner. As you can see on the plan, we've provided a, a pavement uh, striped five foot wide walkway uh, from the remote area 
along the crossover driveway between the north and the south uh, parking and around to the northwest corner of the building. Um, one of the items that came up last month was the um, prospective tenant's interest in putting up a fence in that area. We have deemed that that is not really compatible with a handful or a couple of, of zoning ordinance requirements. It would reduce uh, aisle widths, et cetera, um, to below standards. So we are removing uh, the proposal for a fence. Uh, instead, we would like to stripe the pavement as it's shown. And in addition, at the northwest corner of the building, you can see where the water storage tank is approximately. There's a drive aisle that comes exactly that comes from the west side of the building to the north side of the building, which is currently proposed as 24 feet wide and intended for two, uh, two directional traffic. We would like to revise that um, in order to accommodate the five foot wide pedestrian walkway, uh, as well as safely accommodate um, vehicle traffic in one direction. We'd like to change that from two way to one way traffic uh, heading from the front of the building toward the rear of the building. That way, vehicles coming in uh, the driveway nearest to the building off of Chapman's Road could circle around through the, along the south side of the building uh, looking for parking. If no parking is available there, they could continue toward the rear of the building and then ultimately to the remote lot if necessary. We feel that uh, with a 19-foot wide one-way drive aisle, and the five foot wide uh, protected uh, pedestrian walkway striped exclusively for pedestrian use would provide safe passage for pedestrians from the uh, rear of the remote area to the uh, proposed entranceway. That is our proposal uh, for that item. We would provide additional signage as necessary to uh, restrict uh, vehicle traffic to one way to the north, uh, which would be reflected in our updated site plan for next month's meeting. Are you gonna have signage for, to inform drivers that there is additional parking? If you're coming around that one way pr mm -hmm. proposed with the vegetation, you might not realize that there's another parking lot back there. So it's yeah, some, it's certainly some, something that we can consider. Right. Um, I mean, at, at some point the employees will realize that, but for visitors to the well, site, it might be helpful. I'm thinking about employees first day on the job, everything's, yeah he's late or she's late and he doesn't know where the park. You know, sure. So. Yeah, we could discuss that with the applicant and, and come up with some appropriate locations for signage if uh, if needed. And, and 19, 19 feet for a one-way drive, That I'm pretty sure that's a lot wider than what Chaldo. It is. I believe it's 12 feet for uh, one directional traffic with no parking. Um, so you really do have a buffer between the, the striped walkway and the, uh, and the vehicle traffic if, if that were to occur. Any other questions on that item or should I move on? Could you just yeah. review where the, there's a concern of where the trucks would be driving and throughout the driveway and the pedestrians. Are there any potential conflicts or close calls where the pedestrian walk is and where trucks might be going? Because it, it looks like the right side of the plan is all car, but there might be a concern at the, um, the throat between the two parking lots. Right, if you'll recall, that was approved during the original um, land development plan that section of the of the driveway between the two parking areas was striped and and was approved as a pedestrian walkway in that same fashion that it's shown now um, the remainder of the driveway is 26 feet wide um, so there's a full five foot wide side or or striped pedestrian walkway through that area so we're not uh you know we're not necessarily adding anything in addition to what was previously approved there uh, and keeping in mind too, as Walgreens had described last month, um, their expectation is two or three trucks in the morning, two or three trucks in you know the later in the evening at 10 p.m. This is not going to be uh, you know a high turnover type of a situation where you're going to have these high, you know high number of conflicts between uh, you know passenger vehicles and trucks in this situation. So as that being the case, we're we're comfortable and we're 
in the safety of uh, what's being provided as proposed. Does that answer yeah, your question? Okay. Saldo compliant. Okay. Um, so item five, uh, we touched on that already with the, the drive aisle within the walk or the the pedestrian pathway within the two foot drive aisle will go to one directional. Um, sign number six and seven administrative items which we'll comply with. Um, we have not received any comments from the Township Public Safety Commission or the Landscape or Shade Tree Commission. I don't imagine Landscape and Shade Tree will really be involved in this at all. We've received fully, you know, approved plans. We don't propose any changes to landscaping. Yeah, the, the, I recall the shade trees are there and there's a pretty large area that needs to be clear for the clear site triangles. Yes, and we were able to accommodate that by pushing the trees back a bit at their request. We did uh, keep them and we provided a planted berm. Um, as far as the Public Safety Commission goes, would we receive a comment letter from them? Should we expect something from them? Has it been distributed to the Public Safety Commission? My understanding that they you were on the agenda for this month and old to go to next month. And when is that? when does that meeting take place? It's the first Monday of the month, right? So that'll fall prior to our it was Rich Farm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so March 6th is the next. Yeah, I, I think typically we don't send conditional uses to public safety because it's 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 a use. You're you're approving the concept, not not a specific land development plan. So this is more of a. But they're changing. Not applicable, or they're changing. The driveway and for a one way, so it it probably makes sense to go to the public safety um, because if you're coming back from in March, there's time. Could we attend for that. that meeting, or is that at least we can put it on the agenda? Okay. We can talk offline. And okay, the, that's fine. One thing I did neglect to mention when I was describing the one way traffic, we would sign it as "Do not enter" coming from the rear of the building to the front except for emergency vehicles. If they need to come through during that you know, emergency period of time, they're going to come through. So. And it would be only one way in that little? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. okay. Um, public water and sewer were within the um, limits of the, of the demand that we had initiate, initially anticipated for the, for the use. So we don't have a concern there. We can provide a, a written response to that comment. Um, if we need to re-record the plan, we can re-record the plan. It's really just a matter of pavement striping. I don't know that it's necessary, but if the township deems it necessary, we'll do it. And uh, item 11, we will comply with any of the outstanding items on Bidcock's uh, punch list for improvements that have been constructed or have not yet been approved. Um, I can move on to page 167 of the, uh, the packet, which gets into the zoning comments. Um, under zoning comment, no parking area shall provide for more than 25 vehicle spaces in a row without being separated by a planting strip at least 10 feet wide, et cetera, et cetera. The, uh, one of the, the aisles in the remote lot contains 26 spaces in a row. And whether we take it out and put a tree in or whether we just stripe one of them and then we're at 25, I think we're going to just go with the striping because we have plantings all around the parking lot. And I think it's just kind of makes sense to do that. We have seven uh, surplus spaces, so we'll we'll use one of it, them. It's an existing paved yeah, parking lot. Right. I don't see what, what the point is to make them have to start ripping out. Do they have to go to zone? It is a zoning requirement, yeah. yeah. So it's, right it's a zoning have, requirement. Right where you have your had your cursor there a second ago, we're just going to widen that striped area and get rid of that 26th space, and then we're at 25, and we're good. So. Okay. Um, anyway, I understand all the I's have to be dotted. Um, all items A, B, C, D, E, F, G are deemed to be satisfied by the zoning officer. If anybody would like me to review any of them in particular, I'm happy to do that. Um, they're pretty well. I, I think it's, you know, H is the main mm -hmm. item we yes. like to discuss. Yeah, and I'll have... Um, 
uh, I'll have Scott come up and address that if you have any specific questions. But as was explained, we're awaiting a PennDOT response. Um, but uh, IJKL all seem to have been satisfied. Um, continuing on to page one. I'm sorry, uh, 169 begins the specific standards for a warehouse. And we're, again, on page 170, referring to the tra transportation impact assessment report. I'll pass over that for right now. Um, but B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. <laughs> N, with the exception of five, N5 have been satisfied. So um, what are we looking at here? We got it. We went through this already. This is, uh, again, a reference to the, the pedestrian walkway um, and the internal traffic pattern recommendation in which we're going to ab abide by. Um, moving on to O, uh, we did describe uh, the truck shift from peak roadway, I'm sorry, roadway peak hours to off peak hours. You may recall hearing the Walgreens representative indicating that their trucks would leave the facility generally at 10 p.m. Um, and it would only be a couple of them. So, you know, with that in mind, I think this, this proposal really accomplishes what a lot of these um, specific requirements set to do, which is to limit the, the impact of these trucks during peak roadway hours. So um, we, we feel this has been accomplished. Uh, if you have any other specific questions about that, we can get into that. Um, and item P, uh, and description of strategies that will uh, be used to prevent trucks from idling. And the applicant has agreed to install uh, one or more electrical hookups uh, that trucks can use in lieu of running their engines to power their uh, ancillary systems or Refrigerators, there really won't be refrigerated trucks here, um, but for you know items in the cab that could be powered other than running the engine, uh, they will provide that, as well as um, signage as required under the um, idling, Pennsylvania's idling law requires sites to have signage reminding drivers of the limitations to idling. Those will be posted on the site as well. And I believe these are reflected in notes on the site plan. And that is the end of the uh, zoning officer's review and the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, I can bring Scott up if you would like to direct any specific traffic questions. Scott, good, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't have any any additional site related questions. It looks like um, you've a, a addressed all the conditional use general standards except H, and all the specific standards have been. And in I, I would say in terms of comment H, um, we really want to see what the well, review the the traffic study, and and there is some concern about traffic backing up and whatnot. And although it's a state road, it is a conditional use, so the township has the right to impose reasonable conditions. So um, I understand our township engineer has to review the the traffic uh, study in a little more detail yet. Yep. And uh, Greg or staff, uh, for next, when they come back, can we have the entire traffic impact assessment in, in the packet? Thank you. Yes. We need an extension of time. Oh, extension. extension. Make a motion to take it under advisement. I'll second. Yeah. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye.
Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>
so so we owe we owe the township an updated phase one b interim traffic study the only reason that hasn't been filed with you yet is we want to confirm the details with PennDOT and make sure that they're in agreement with what's being proposed there. so there's some details such as an interim traffic signal that is being discussed with them now or a temporary traffic signal I should say um, so like the expectation is we should have an answer from them certainly within the next month hopefully in the next two or three weeks that'll allow us to Mr. Hoffman to update the study get it to Pitcock and circulate it to the township staff and then move this forward from that point forward. So um we'll probably need another take it on advisory next time. I'm sorry. Another extension is fine. Yeah. Since since Mr. Preston isn't with me tonight, I'll probably have to get that back over to you after after yeah, and, and we do have a little time for that. So again, I'm, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any, if there's any open questions from any of the review letters or anything that's on the Planning Commission's mind, uh, we can certainly talk about that tonight. I had a question in one of the review letters, um, I believe it was from the zoning officer regarding the existing building and is there a projected use for that building? And that's a, that's a good question. Thank you. For, I was going to bring that up tonight. Um, so the, the existing, I'm going to call it the, the Jarris barn office, that um, K has decided to use as at least in a temporary condition for their office. They're using it now. They're starting to work, do some work and clean up the inside of the building and, and do some repairs. Um, so that's a preserved historic structure. And um, long-term use, we're not really sure what, what whether or not the, uh, whether or not they will continue to use that as their office. But certainly during the initial course of the project, they will. So certainly for the next two, three years, and maybe longer because of the, this is going to be a longer build the entire project. So the intention is for them to use it. Uh, and that's why I think some of those comments were generated, because they did ask me to see if we could come up with some more parking in and around the existing building, and the zoning officer noted some concerns with with what we proposed so i have to take that back to k and decide whether and, and talk further to the staff and decide whether we look at an alternate parking plan or we consider requesting variances to allow for that parking but i'd be certainly open to Would they consider it temporary parking uh i'm sorry temporary parking for for some of the ones that are for some of the parking spots that would be Non-conforming. Uh, well, I, I, you know, by the time we, it would be some time before this portion would get constructed. So there would be available existing parking for, for some time until then. Is that what you're asking, or oh, I'm asking the spots that are that are on the corner, which would ask for them on a temporary. If they're using this as a sales office or something that you know. Winds down, they can get rid of some of the parking that wouldn't. That wouldn't. I'd have to verify that with them because I, I, as far as I know right now, they're not they're not necessarily using it as a sales office. They're using it as, I don't, for a better term, a construction office. But really, you know, he's just got general staff working <laughs> working out of that space. But they really don't know right now, long term, what their what their plan is. But temporary parking is certainly an option here. Um, but Mark, yet. I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted. I just wanted to add. Currently, right now, they have the parking spaces there for the office use that they have in that building, where they're going to continue to do the mortgages and that out of that building as an office space. So, it is a lawful non-conforming building right now with the I believe it has 19 spaces now or 20, 22 spaces I believe. The issue that's arising is we need to know post construction when this is done what is going to be the use of that building because. Parking will need to be provided because the current parking will be in the basin. Yes. So that's why the issue, or I shouldn't say the issue, the concern is post construction, what is going to be the use of that building since it's remaining? Its plan is to remain historical value. So okay. parking will need to be provided for that building since it's going to go away. So what's the use going to be? Right. And the, and the, the, during the preliminary plan process, 
the use wasn't defined, the plan that was approved illustrated 13 parking spaces adjacent. Again, there was a wish by, by Kay to say, you know, we've got, like you said, somewhere between 19 and 22 now. We'd prefer to have that and maintain that number, which is why we made the modification to the plan to try to add some parking uh, that was defined as indented parking. And again, I, I in this particular case, the, the road through here, the cul-de-sac road, will be a private road. So we looked at options here. We added a couple indented parking spaces along that roadway parallel in front of the building. And then we proposed six spaces at the end of the cul-de-sac bulb, which is not an unusual condition on a private road, but it isn't specifically, as has been pointed out, permitted by your ordinance. So you know, I need to go back to the developer and say, are you, we may, we may pursue, we may be interested in pursuing requesting a variance for those spaces. So the, it is a private road, okay. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's, yeah. So that building's owned by someone else and they still have to tell you what it, the use is gonna be? They're, no, the, the, the building's owned by K. Oh, okay. And they're actually, okay. util, for a long time, okay. Jairus was, okay. was, had a lease and they were using that building. And they have, they have since vacated, so K is actually using the building now. The question is what happens when the parking goes away, we build the basin, what's the best parking for that, that structure? We obviously can't move the structure and the extension of the roadway up is, is a fixed location. So it's, okay. if it is Understood. a variance request, it isn't something that we're creating, it's created by those conditions that, that exist. So it is something we have to resolve. I don't have any other comments. Um, this plan is generally um, in conformance with the overall plan that was approved still. I, I haven't seen any major changes from that. I think the, the big item is the temporary traffic signal. Right. I, do, I do appreciate the updates. I know um, it's been a, a lot of back and forth. I know there's a lot of engineering comments you've been working on and a lot of revisions and this has been going on for for months so it, it's um, you know, we appreciate that the update and look forward to you keep working on, on the, the revisions to make this uh, project um, viable for the township okay well, I appreciate everybody's time. I had one other comment um, the notes also stated that you'd be before the public safety committee in march um will that be with the traffic information with pendot's comments that's the intention and if not would you postpone that until april so that they have the ability to i think we, we would at least post if we didn't have confirmation that what we're proposing to them and the information we provided them is is they're in agreement on then we probably would postpone again okay. but we're still hoping by then to have that resolved. Very good. Thank you. Hey, is there anyone in, in the audience or online? Please just make sure to state your name. Uh, Robert Hain, 1731 Independence Court. Uh, yeah, this whole development is going up in my backyard. But right now I want to emphasize exactly the point it got a lot of uh, attention here, and that's the uh, intersection of Brandywine and Walbert. I live there. Um, I walked. To, I actually walked to Target. I walked to Weiss. I walked to the dentist. I walked dogs. That intersection is it's just terrible, especially uh, early morning. Uh, eastbound traffic, it'll back up Cedar Crest way back to there. And they're saying a temporary, yeah, that'll help, but I think probably long-term you're gonna need more traffic control. PennDOT thinks 45 miles per hour is great along Walbert. I think it's way excessive. There's just too many cars getting out of the intersection, turning left is almost impossible. I think my only request here, my only comment is, uh, you know, don't please don't compromise on traffic uh, safety there. If we need a, a signal, put it in. Same thing, please don't let PennDOT compromise on this. If they can even slow down the speed, I'd really appreciate it. I appreciate uh, Mr. Tallarita's uh, 
notes on this and the work he's doing to keep them on their toes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. No, uh, Tony does a, a very thorough review, and um, you know, PennDOT they they're known not to compromise. They'll say what's required, and that's what has to get done. Um, we are. Um, it is a state road, so I just want to reiterate, um, it's really under PennDOT's jurisdiction. Thank you. There. Um, anyone else? I'll make a motion to take the plan under advisement. Trevor Dombach. Aye. Tim Dugan. Aye. Brian Height. Aye. Diane Kelly. Aye. Mark Luth. Aye. David Wilson. Aye. <clears throat> motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Agenda item number six, transportation infrastructure update. Thank you. Actually, uh, not much of an update. You know, paving, paving season still closed until April. Uh, regarding some of the capital improvement projects in the township, we note that the 309 Tillman is sliding still. They're still in, uh, they're still trying to get plans and uh, acquisitions. So some of that money is being spent other places. It's not saying that the project won't go, it's just sliding on their schedule a little bit. So as expected with a project that large, but that's all I really have. Great, if, I could, thank you. if I could jump in, um, we do have a meeting scheduled with staff and North Whitehall Township, Lanta and um, the 309 Betterment project manager to kind of see what's changed, where they're at with their project, kind of let them know of some of the, the projects we saw tonight um, so that they can kind of incorporate that into their plan. So we have that meeting coming up, I believe next week or the following week. Can I ask a question regarding the gentleman's comments um, on the need for traffic relief? And speeding on Walbert. I know we've heard that before from citizens in the township. Is there any way that we can present those comments to PennDOT? Just it is citizen feedback. These are people who live in the area and are daily aware of the challenges on Walbert. We can certainly bring it up when we have the meetings with them. Um, I think one of the things that is happening and we're seeing on the Walbert corridor is there's good sidewalks, you know, a newly constructed, they're being used. Um, and some of the sections that he mentioned, like walking to the target, there's some missing pieces in there um, that makes it a little more dangerous. Um, but with some of the development coming in and the Ridge Farm improvements, those pedestrian that pedestrian connectivity will be put in, um, so I think it's going to help with pedestrian safety. Um, speeds along the road, getting speed adjusted is a tough thing because it looks at and I'll defer to Tony on it, but it's like the 85th percentile, and if people are speeding there, you're never going to hit get it lowered. I think that's something that we can keep our eye on. Obviously, there's going to be construction in this area for the next foreseeable future, I'll say. But as these, as the development's built, as the cars are there, I think that's a great time to keep your eye on it. And if necessary, you know, potentially do speed counts, things like that. You know, I think that there's going to be a lot of changes happening as one section goes to construction, one road gets closed. There's going to be a lot of <clears throat> variables. But I think that's a great idea to keep that in mind, keep that on the list that as we see development happen and see more cars, keep an eye on speed. Thank you. I know with the Regency development, there's an awful lot of um, pedestrians that cross Walbert 
there um, into the Springhouse Farms neighborhood. So I'm seeing a lot more pedestrians crossing across Walbert, and that's certainly a concern. Yeah, I know that was brought up when the Regency was proposed. The developer wanted to lower the speed limit to 35, and PennDOT said no. But they also said after it's all built, you can reevaluate with current conditions and see what's going on out there. And just with regard to the Walbert corridor, um, and I mentioned Lanta, I don't know if anybody noticed, but Lanta did go in and put new stops along Walbert because of that pedestrian connectivity, something that they really look for. Um, and we had a meeting out here on site to talk about some improvements here. And I explained to them that, you know, we have almost, almost sidewalks all the way down to Cedar Crest. Um, so they went ahead and updated some of the stop locations. All right. Um, agenda item number seven, courtesy of the floor. Anyone in the audience? Is there anyone on online? All right. Okay. Mr. Adams. We have one application in. Um, that would be Montar. They'll be back again next month. And as you saw tonight, the, uh, the 4741 Chapman's Road conditional use will continue next month as well. Um, last night, the Board of Commissioners directed two uh, potential zoning amendments uh, to move to Legal Review and Planning Commission. Uh, one is a zoning use certificate, which is I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, we're going to be looking at that. And the other one is height, the height exception amendment. Um, so those are the two we're going to look at next month as well. Thank you. Then to item number eight, adjournment. Motion. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.